So today we're going to be making green chili stew. Um, this is a fantastic van life um, recipe. It's very simple. You can have everything pre-made. And while I will be cooking in my kitchen today, it's actually very simple to make on a Westphalia or any other type of uh, camp stove. Um, so follow along. Today we'll be using minced garlic, some pre-diced uh, stew meat, it's pork obviously, you can tell by the color, uh, white or yellow onions, and uh, today I'm using gold potatoes, yellow potatoes, gold potatoes, whatever. It can be made with uh, russets or anything else, I just simply prefer this. I don't have uh, normal olive oil, so today I'll be using a garlic olive oil that I got for uh, Christmas. So we're going to start off uh, coating the bottom of our pan, of our pot, I should say, with a good little bit of olive oil. Forgot this has the slow drizzle on it. Should probably pop that out, but uh, you don't have to be too generous with the olive oil. All right, then in with the minced garlic. Uh, that's going to be kind of a taste thing, totally up to you. Obviously, um, I like it a lot. So we're going to put that on a high heat and let it start to, to brown the garlic, and then we'll move on from there. So I'm intentionally using a very small aged plastic uh, cutting board. This is one that would fit in a Westy kitchen um, rather than a giant one that I would normally use when I'm cooking in my kitchen. So um, for the onions, um, <clears throat> totally up to you on how what size you want to use. Um, personally, I would say don't dice them, chop them. Um, I like to go about in thirds each direction and then cut it in half. Um, because these are going to get cooked with the garlic, then they're going to get cooked with the pork, then they're going to get boiled with the potatoes. So you don't want uh, you don't want them coming out like uh, fish gills, not fish gills, fish fins. That's what I mean. Overly cooked and way too soft. Literally one of the best smells ever, 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 ever. Olive oil and garlic. Nothing bad can ever come from olive oil and garlic. You never hear somebody say, hey, yeah, I uh, was simmering some olive oil and garlic and broke my ankle. Or my, life, my wife left me for always cooking olive oil and garlic. This doesn't happen. Okay, so as this starts to brown, in with the onions. Put them on in. Now the one thing you will have from this recipe inside your West, Westie or Sprinter or whatever you're running is a smell of garlic. So maybe some bad does come from it. But um, so this is where you know when you're when you're cooking in a uh, camper van, um, sometimes it, it is okay to fire up the camp chef outside um, if you don't want your sleeping quarters to smell like what you just ate for dinner because it's amazing how after you ate it for dinner it doesn't smell nearly as good as when it as what it did when it was cooking. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more garlic because I don't like vampires. All right, so as I said, uh, the onions are gonna cook with the garlic, then they're gonna cook with the pork. You don't wanna cook them too long with the garlic, uh, but what I found is if you add the pork uh, too early, your garlic isn't actually gonna get brown. So we're gonna let this go for a couple seconds here. I'm kinda in a hurry today because my family's on their way home from church. I left, they hung out a bit. And this is after church lunch. All right, so pork. Yes, I'm gonna wash my hands after this. No, I'm not about to pop this into my mouth. Throw in the pork. And this will be the last time that this spoon gets used for anything outside of this pot because 
because pork. I love pork uh, because it's about the only thing you can afford to buy anymore. I'm not made of money. Although the next recipe up is going to be a pot roast. So uh, maybe I'm a liar. You'll notice the spoon is going to stay in here, not go on the cutting board after the pork. The pork didn't touch the cutting board and I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, so pork is a pretty salty meat, but uh, remember this is gonna end up being a soup. I call it green chili stew. In reality, it doesn't have a roux in it. There's no flour, so it's actually a soup. But nobody calls it that, so I'm going a little bit heavy on the garlic salt. All right, so the reason I said this is a fantastic uh, van life recipe is everything I'm doing right now, I could have done at home. Well, I'm at home, but if I were in my Westie, I could have done this at home, had them bagged in little Ziplocs and just dumped them in as we went along. One key is for your potatoes, do not put your potatoes in the pot before the pork is done or your pork will take forever to get done. Also, another note, try to make all of your chopped, notice I said chopped, not diced, um, all of your chopped potatoes about the same size. So regardless of the size of the potato, you wanna make sure that everything ends up being the same size so that they cook. Uh, Volume wise, if you will, um, you want the potatoes to cook down in a uniform rate so you don't have some dissolving while others are still firm. So again, this is something you can do at home before you leave, which is awesome. I'm going in thirds with them and then in half and then about a half inch wide. To make a nice uniform size. I'll bring you back when I get these done. All right, so imagine these have been in a gallon Ziploc and uh, just in a nice chest that wouldn't need to be necessarily refrigerated. So there you go. When you're cooking, if you're cooking inside your Westie, obviously your flame. I'm cooking on an electric range right now, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, but my wife is and she wins. Um, even though I cook more. All right, so you want to make sure that your pork is thoroughly done, but uh, always remember to use a lid. Let me set this spoon over here so I can clean up after it later. Always use a lid, right? So that you uh, get the, keep the heat in. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Um, when in doubt, remember you are going to boil the heck out of this later. So, but uh, pork's looking pretty well, thoroughly cooked. So we're going to go in with the potato. All right, going in with the potato. Important note: <clears throat> when you're using the yellow potatoes or gold potatoes, they take a lot less time to cook than russets. So, going in with the water, yes, this is a blender pitcher, because I suspect most, uh, most van games, most vans in general are going to have a blender before they're going to have a pitcher for anything else. Of course, always add the hottest water that you can and stir it in. And 
pop the lid on. And that one last detail. All right, so you guys can probably hear my three-year-old in the background. Um, now, this is, yes, what makes it green chili stew? Well, green chili makes it green chili stew. And I got a little bit of a bone to pick with uh, something I've heard going on. Um, I have heard that Colorado thinks it grows the best green chili. Get out of here with that crap. Literally, it's called Hatch Green Chili. Hatch is a town in southern New Mexico. It is not Colorado green chili. You do not have the best green chili. You don't even know green chili. Green chili is New Mexico. So, you're on New Mexico Desert Classics. I love the state of Colorado, but get out of here with this green chili, our green chili better stuff. Your green chili might be good, but it came from here in the first place. And our soil's better. And our temperature's better. And our green chili's better. And our green chili stew's better. And we're just generally better. Just kidding, we love you, Colorado. You're better than Texas. In with the green chili. So, if you're wondering, yes, that was fresh green chili, fresh frozen green chili that we buy in uh, 40 pound bags, they roast it at the grocery store, and you bring it home, you peel it off. So they literally tumble it around over flames to sear the skin so that it doesn't cook the inside of the, of the chili itself. And no, it's not an Anaheim pepper, it is a chili. Um, and you come home, you, you slick it off into garbage disposal, and then you put three or four of them in. I like to use the small uh, snack size half sandwich bag Ziplocs. You put them in there, you freeze them, you take them out, you thaw them in the microwave, you chop them up, you use them. Um, now, I lived in Italy for three years. And while we were over there, my father-in-law used to do this amazing thing of dehydrating uh, green chili and sending it to us in the mail. We would rehydrate it. Yes, it worked. It was awesome. We also found, and this is where, this is critical, right? Green chili is pretty popular in the U.S. now. Um, the frozen stuff that you can buy from, you know, companies like Bueno and whatnot, you can go into, into a Walmart or an Albertsons or Smith's, Kroger, wherever, you're going to find a tub and it's going to have green chili in it. Guess what? It's pretty dang good and it's okay. And yes, it's from Hatch, New Mexico. So that means it's even better. So it's okay to use that. And the cool thing is while it's frozen or while these, uh, these fresh ones that you have frozen are in your freezer, they are blocks of ice. So yeah, they're taking up space, but they're also blocks of ice when you put them in there. Dan, how do I tell if it's done? Good question. All you're gonna do is dig down in here, pull out a potato. I'm gonna set this one up here so I don't burn myself. Potatoes hold heat. Yep, almost there. Five more minutes. So from New Mexico Desert Classics, I hope you enjoyed this first recipe uh, from our Van Life recipe series, Green Chili Stew. Go out, enjoy your best life, and part of enjoying your best life is having the best food. I hope I helped out with that.